Today's lesson is called Interpreting the Remainder. All right, so we have been practicing doing some division problems where there's a remainder with our answer, with our quotient. So today we're going to talk about, well, what do we do with that remainder? What does that remainder mean? And in order to figure that out, we need to understand what the numbers are representing. So we need to look at some word problems and then start thinking about, well, how will we use our remainder in our answer? Okay, so when we have a remainder, there are four things that we can basically do with that remainder with our division problem. Okay, there's four strategies. The first strategy would be to write the remainder as a fraction. Okay, that's when we can share our remainder with all of the groups that we make. The next strategy would be to only use the quotient and not use the remainder at all in our answer. Another strategy would be to add one more to our quotient, and we'll talk about that when we get to some of those problems. And the last strategy would be to only use the remainder depending on what the question is asking us to do. So those are the four things that we're going to talk about today. So let's take a look at some sample problems with these strategies. All right, so here is our first sample problem. At the bonfire, Mrs. Smith made 17 cups of hot chocolate. She divided it equally between four kids. How many cups did each kid get? Now this isn't talking about cups like a, like a mug. This is talking about cups when you measure things in cups, when you measure liquids in cups. So she made 17 cups of hot chocolate and she divided that equally among four kids. So we wanna know how many cups of hot chocolate did each kid get? So my division problem here is 17 divided by four. My division problem is 17 divided by four. So I'm gonna think about my fours and think, well, I can get really close to 17 with four times four, because four times four is 16. So let's do that. Four times four is 16. When I subtract, I find out I have one left over. This is my remainder. So I could say four remainder one. But when we go out in the real world, we don't say, oh, I had four remainder one cups of hot chocolate. No, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this leftover one cup. All right. I have this one extra cup of hot chocolate, and I can pour more than one cup into each child's mug. So I can actually share this one leftover cup among those four kids. And when I share that among them, I'm actually going to write this out as a fraction. So I have four. Every kid is getting four cups and I'm going to change this into a fraction. I'm going to use my and I'm going to put my remainder on top of my fraction and my divisor on the bottom of my fraction. So my answer would be every kid can get four and one fourth, four and one fourth cups of hot chocolate in their mug. And they can get four and one fourth cups of hot chocolate. I can share hot chocolate. I can everybody can get more than one cup of the hot chocolate. So that is the first strategy, the first strategy of writing the remainder as a fraction. We put the remainder on the top of our fraction. Here our remainder was one. We put our divisor, the number we were dividing by, on the bottom of our fraction. So we have four and one fourth cups. Let's try another example. All right, our next, next problem is Tony made 52 cookies to sell at the school carnival. He's putting the cookies in bags of five. How many full bags can he make? Okay, so again, I know I have 52 cookies all together and he's breaking them into groups of five. He's putting them into bags with five cookies in each bag. So how many Oh, sorry, he's putting cookies in bags of five. He's putting, yeah, he's putting five cookies into each bag. How many bags of cookies can we make with these 52? So my division problem is 52 divided by five. 52 divided by five. So I want to think about my five times tables and how close I can get to 52. Well, I know five times 10 is 50. So I know I can get 10 groups when I subtract 52, take away 50, I get a remainder of two. 10, remainder two. Meaning I can make 10 bags of five cookies and I would have two cookies left over. That's not enough cookies to fill a whole other bag. 
So I would have these two cookies left over. All right. My question said, how many full bags can he make? Well, I have these two left over. They can't make a full bag, but these 10 can. I can make 10 full bags, 10 full bags of cookies. I have two left over, but the question isn't asking me about how many I have left over. It's just asking me how many full bags I can make with what I have. And so that answer is 10. I can make 10 full bags. And when we look at our strategies, this is when I'm only using the quotient. I wanted to know how many complete sets I could make, how many full bags I could have. I'm just using the quotient. The quotient again is the 10, the remainder is the two. So that's our second strategy, just using the quotient. How many full bags? Nothing with the leftovers, nothing else. Okay, there's two more strategies to go. This is our next problem to look at. The 84 fourth graders are going on the spooky mansion ride. Each car on the ride holds nine people. How many cars will be needed in all? Okay, so there's 84 fourth graders. They're going on a ride. Each car of the ride holds nine people. How many cars will be needed in all? So our division problem here is gonna be 84 divided by nine, 84 divided by nine. So I'm gonna to think to myself, well, let's see, nine times eight is 72. I can go a little higher, nine times nine is 81. So let's do nine times nine is 81. I'm gonna have three left over, nine remainder three. Well, I can't go and say, hey, you know what? We need nine remainder three cars to fit all the kits. Now, if I went and did the strategy that we just did and said, oh, nine cars, nine cars would only get 81 of the students to get to ride. But I wanna know how many cars we'll need in all. Well, if everyone is going to be riding, I need nine full cars and there's gonna be one more car to hold these extra three kids. They wanna go on the ride too, right? So we're, in fact, we're going to need 10 cars to hold all of the kids. We need nine of our full cars and we're gonna need one more car to hold these last three students. So that is gonna be 10 cars that we need. So if you notice, our answer is at nine, our answer is one more than nine, 10. We're using the strategy of add one to the quotient. We're gonna add one more to our quotient so that we can include all of the things that we're using, okay? And in this fat case, it's children. All right, so we're going to add one more to the nine to make 10 cars so we can fit everybody together. Okay, one, our last strategy. It's our last problem to go over. There are 53 students at a play. They will sit in rows of six, starting in the first row and filling in every seat. How many students will sit in the last row? Okay, so here I know I have 53 students. They're filling in the rows as they go. They're filling in every seat. Okay, they're gonna start and they're just sitting in rows of six. Six kids, six kids, six kids, six kids. And then the last row isn't gonna have enough. How many kids we're gonna be sitting in the very last row? So let's take a look at our division problem. We're gonna divide our 53 students into rows of six. So 53 divided by six. Okay, let's see. Well, I know six times nine is 54. That's too many. So I'm going to use eight. Six times eight is 48. When I subtract, I'm going to have just five left. Okay, so eight remainder five. I can make eight rows of six and I would have five students left over. All right. So eight rows of six. Well, looking at this, the question was, how many students will sit in the last row? Well, to fit everybody from our last problem, we know we'd need nine rows, right? Because the eight rows don't hold everybody. There's five left over. But the question isn't how many rows we need. It's how many students will sit in the last row. Well, that's just these five that were left over. That's just these five that are left over. So it wants to know how many are in the last row or how many are left at the end. 
that is when we're going to use our strategy number four, use only the remainder. So to answer this question, how many students will fit in the last row? Five students, because that is how many are left after we fill um, up eight complete rows of six. So five students are left over. All right, so today you're gonna do a few problems where you're going to interpret the remainder. You're gonna decide which one of our strategies you're going to use and you're gonna find the answer to some problems. 